Hello everyone and welcome to my second interview on the channel with Liam Starkey from the Rotunda Inclusive Hub today. How are you doing Liam, you alright? I'm very well Joel, how are you doing mate, okay? Yeah, very well myself, thanks for coming on. I just basically wanted to talk to you today about the projects and the work that you do. And can you tell me about a bit about the origins of the project itself, how it started and its aims and things like that? Because it's something that I'm really interested in. Yeah, as I said earlier as well, just so everyone knows, the background is the yeah. kitchen's getting these <laughs> <done. laughs> um, Yeah, so we started from an amateur boxing club um, called the Rotunda Boxing Club in Liverpool. Yeah. And uh, we started by the council, asked, us, asked the gym to be more inclusive. So my dad, at the time he was running the gym, we started uh, inclusive sessions on a weekend, on a Saturday, and it grown. It, it, the numbers uh, increased every week and the abilities, the ranges of people that were coming through the door increased. And then we sort of outgrown the boxing gym that we would be residing in. Um, yes, it, it was it was something that was growing and growing and we decided to go our separate ways and we, we luckily we got our own premises. Um, and after, after the short while, um, the sort of numbers and the abilities that we work and with has, has increased to the hundreds now. We've, we've probably got, I think we've probably got about seven, eight hundred members and we work a lot with schools as well. So the, the whole idea with us was was to to target marginalised groups for, for people that have never really been involved in any sort of activities, fitness-based activities, and, and we specialise in boxing. And we're to sort of include everyone so everyone can take part. Um, and then it got a bit more sophisticated in terms of the sessional work that we were doing. We were doing more bespoke sessions. So we were we were targeting certain ailments, if you like, that people may have had to try and improve. So for an example, I've got a guy called Will who's got cerebral palsy. He's in a wheelchair and he can't use his left arm. And we've been doing rehab work on him and we've had many successes in terms of one-to-one -one work, group work. And uh, it's also evolved into other things in terms of uh, food parcels. We were delivering food parcels to schools. We've done about 60 per week over COVID periods, over six months. We do educational courses for people. We do our own initiatives as well in terms of trying to help women who've been involved in domestic violence or men who have mental health problems. So it's evolved from just including children with autism. It's now evolve from not just only boxing sessions but the whole spectrum of trying to help anyone just through the the the, the, the sort of tool of of boxing non-competitive non boxing exercises really it's fantastic to see how, how many people you reach out to and the fact that boxing you know helps people on such wide wider spectrum could you talk to me about that and the benefits uh boxing and physical activity brings to not only disabled people but able-bodied people as well yeah so boxing sort of instills a, a great framework for you to go off in terms of uh, personally I, I i've never i've never boxed uh, competitively because i was always a big child I was always above me you know, above me my age standards, I was oh, always too big. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, but I, I always used the tool of boxing in terms of the fitness aspect, the disciplines of it in my life. And it always helped me in, in terms of work, my work life, my social life, my private life. Just being able to be active helped my mental health so much. And I think in terms of the empowerment it brings to people with an, a person with additional needs, that may have not been able to access mainstream provision. It's massive. It's so empowering for someone to, not just someone with additional need, but someone who may have never put a boxing glove on before, or someone who may not have been involved in fitness activities. Um, it, it creates also it creates respite for the families of, of people. So you may you may agree yourself. I mean, when you were doing your fundraiser, you were training hard to see in the room, and you were training constantly. Now I'd like to see your parents or your family. You know, they're getting a better version of you when yeah, when, like, when they're with you. Because uh, it also provides them with a you know break, not only physically but also mentally, in the sense of they know the child or uh, you know child is going through these sessions. They're going to be safe and they're going to enjoy it. 
And and they're also going to get a break as well. And like you say, exercise would also then improve in the home life because that person would then come home, feel better about themselves. And uh, yeah, it has massive benefits, really. Do you think it's something that should be added to the curriculum? Because I don't really see boxing. I know when I was at school, it didn't really get taught in schools. But if it was like maybe something to do with non-contact, I think it would be really useful to teaching schools based on the PE curriculum. I think it gets looked down upon at times as PE, but it teaches really good life skills. And I'm sure you agree there. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I totally agree with you, Joe. It does it creates great life skills, great habits, um, which you can take with you for the rest of your life. In terms of schools rolling it out, I mean, currently, the Inclusive Hub work with around about five schools and they will come to our gym for sessions. And the feedback that we get back from the teachers is the lower the medicational costs for some kids, for some children who may have autism or Fantastic. behavioral issues. Um, the better they're getting better grades, better attendance, better excuse me, better attendance, better overall appearance. So there's no negative in terms of the stigma against um boxing in schools. The non as you say, the non-contact boxing, you know, there's a lot of things about boxing, um, the discipline of it, but actual in our gym as well, there's no sparring, there's no anyone hitting each other. Um, so I think the discipline itself, the, the benefits are totally outweigh any sort of stigma against that. But, uh, you know, certain schools are different. The certain locations where there's deprived areas, the certain locations where there's there's affluent areas. So to turn all across mainstream would be pretty hard. But um, for the likes of ourselves and the service we provide, we've found that um, schools, specialised schools, the, you know, the queuing up now to work with us because the benefits... Uh, from the sessional work that we do, you know, they totally outweigh any sort of negative. There isn't any negative with it. So one day maybe, but for now, uh, unfortunately, it's it's not something that I don't think that's going to get rolled out, or, you know, currently at this moment in time. I know these schools do a lot of good work, but I always say to people, like, it's important to have life teachers as well. And uh, I would describe you as one of those from what I've just been speaking to you about They. You know, we all may not be academically as clever as some of these people, but I believe life teachers have more of an impact sometimes than classroom teachers. I had a few people mm. like that in my life, and I'm sure you did if you'd like to go on to that about who who inspire who inspire you to set up the project and how important do you think it is that we do have life teachers to keep people on the straight and narrow who the school system's not necessarily for, if you understand what I mean. Yeah, totally understand, mate. Yeah, I mean, taking away the ability side of things, and let's just talk about a, yeah. ba a badly behaved, badly behaved child in school. Okay, so a child may not be able to get on the level with a school teacher, who a teacher trying to discipline them. Now we have children that come to us um, who may be suffering in school because of the behaviour. Um, now a lot of the, the, a lot of our coaches. We have, a, we have a variant of young and older older people. No matter what, one of our coaches will relate to a different type of people coming through. Um, some of them are streetwise, some of them experience different things. And being able to relate and have that bond with someone and that mutual respect is, is so different. And, and a lot of people that walk into a boxing gym, you know, a, a child who might, or a young person who might have um, really sort of uh, badly behaviour or bad backgrounds or crime or whatever, they can just by the art of exercise and relating to people totally change their lives. Um, in terms of this project, I, I work with my dad and my dad created it. So I've had that bond with my dad. So it was great for me because he was the founder, he created it um, and I've always had that respect obviously for me, for my own dad. Um, but I, to be honest, I, I respect anyone who gets into a boxing thing. It, it's something, you know, someone, these coaches or even the, the children that we take, just for them to get in and, and, and have a go. Um, it, it, you've got to take your hat off to all the people, just just you know the bravery of it. But yeah, I mean, to answer your question, I think if you can relate to someone in terms of mutual respect or talk on their level, which some schools don't do, unfortunately, you know, some can, but walking into an impartial boxing gym or like the, the inclusive hub, a student to walk in there, they're not, they're not on their own turf, so they're off the comfort zone. 
And if they've got someone like myself or one of our coaches talking to them, they may have a different level of respect. And then, therefore, you may get a bit more out of them in terms of the exercises and in terms of behaviour. Um, but it's vital to relate to people in order for you to get them to try and progress. Yeah. I can't help but smile listening to you, mate. I think it's absolutely quality work. And you said there, you said it all with your dad. That must be an absolutely brilliant thing for you both. And you've got staff doing great work. Uh, talking about you guys, really, what impact does it have on you as coaches to see the benefits that you're having on these kids and or adults, etc.? You know, Joe, it's, it's it's not even a job. It's 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 you know it's it's the best job in the world. What's that saying? That you never work a day in your life if you if yeah. you do something you love. And honestly, mate, it's it's you you know yourself if you got involved in a bit of coaching yourself as you get a bit older to see someone progress. Yeah, I do. Yeah, myself. Yeah. Yeah, you do a bit, don't you? And you know your boxing, don't you, mate? And if you can teach something to someone, just a little tip, and then you see that them implement it in the gym and then into life, and it's it's so it's so satisfying. But I mean, whereas I mean, we as you say, we deal with a lot of different backgrounds. The area which resides in now Kirkdale, it's a very deprived area of, of Liverpool. It's got a high crime rate, um, you know, a, a low rate of of income. So the, the people that you come that are coming through the door, not just children with additional needs, but people suffering mental health problems, um, people who you know have lost family members through COVID and stuff like that. So I, I've had I have older fellas come over in the seventies and asking me how to do a certain exercise or just just listening to people, just being a, a just being a shoulder for someone to have a chat to. Sometimes not saying nothing, and you are doing something by not saying nothing. Absolutely, do you know what I mean? I think uh, so, the importance of just being able to read a room is absolutely quality, isn't it? And just know that you're there for somebody and doesn't you don't necessarily have to say anything to ha- make an impact, like you say. Obviously, the pro- you mentioned earlier the project's grown a lot over the years. Have you had uh, recognition for the work that you've done in terms of awards and taking on more staff so you know deal with the extra participants that come, which is obviously a great thing? Yeah, so back in, I think it was 2018, uh, we won um, a, an award from Liverpool City Council. I think it was it was the best um, sports organisation at the time. And then the year later, um, I think Liverpool Echo, we, we had a run-up award for the better thing, best sports organisation or something similar. So we've had, we've had sort of recognition in the past. Um, since then, we've grown considerably, but not to sound cheesy. I mean, the, the, the recognition is, is on a daily basis, and in, in terms of oh, the man. feedback we get on social media is great. You know, some of, yeah, it's it's great. Some of the some of the comments you get on social media, the likes now I'm chatting to you, um, twenty past eight at night is is great because you know <laughs> I can have a nice little chat with you, relate to you. This is the perks of the job for me. Do you know what I mean? So. It, it's great. It, it is. It's 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 so it's so rewarding in its own sense without actually someone giving you the trophy. Um, yeah. But you know, hopefully in the future we'll get, we might get something in the future. We don't know. <laughs> yeah, I think uh, it's the work that goes unnoticed that I'm sure you'll agree is better than yeah. any trophy. Unfortunately, yeah. like for the world that's go- what's going on in the world at the moment, the pandemic would have obviously impacted your work and the project itself. How did you like? What strategies did you develop during the pandemic to counteract that to make sure that these children and adults got the help that they still needed while keeping everybody safe? So autism, which is is probably around about fifty percent of our client base, it's very routine based. So we had to perform sessions through COVID, no matter what, anyway, because the routine for these children and the families would have been uh, decimated. So we've done a lot of outside sessions and we've done a pre-book where it was, at one stage, it was one coach per four or five participants. So we, we, we played by the rules on that factor. Um, all our coaching staff have all been double vaccinated. But now in the gym, um, it's, again, it's pre-book. We have... Two meter mats, two meter by two meter. So when that social distance was implemented, it was quite simple. Each person to a mat. Um, as I say, the sanit- sanitation side of things, everyone will get sanitized, but we do have a fog machine, which after every session we clean down, totally wipe down, and then the next session comes in. Um, so we've been very, very vigilant in, in terms of being COVID safe. And, and to be fair, through COVID, it, it 
our numbers probably, I would say we probably increased by about a third because mm-hmm. we were the only one providing a service and we done it in a safe manner. Um, and we got through it quite, you know, not easily, but we got through it in a um, successful way because we seem to be more, more getting set, more recognition now because more people are coming to us. Um, but COVID was obviously testing time and, and, and stuff like that. And we're still going through it now. Yeah. But, you know, everyone needs to exercise no matter what sort of pandemic. You need that respite. Parents need it and, and the, the participant needs it as well. Um, but it's just a deal and using a bit of common sense and making sure that you're, you're not overcrowding the gym. Everyone's at a safe distance. Everything gets cleaned. All your coaches are, 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 are prepared properly. And, and that's it. Make just good organisation, really. It's brilliant that you was able to rise to such a large challenge, especially in a testing time. What was disappointing, though, is like people disappointing. Sorry, is like people like yourself sort of went unnoticed during that time in terms of funding from government and you know things like that. Mm. How is how important is it that grassroots schemes like these don't go unnoticed and get the funding that you deserve and need in order to, for you to work at best capacity? It, it's paramount that, you know, like um, CICs and companies like ourselves get noticed and get the support they obviously need. Um, <laughs> but a lot of our a lot of our sort of goodwill, our funds will come from goodwill from some lovely, fantastic like minds and local companies. Um, the Steve Morgan Foundation, who, who's helped a, a huge amount of charities on our Merseyside, they've been pivotal in, 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 in us surviving, really. And the general public, local people from the community, people on social media donating money has been massive. That's why we're, we're a community company and we belong to the community. Um, in the future, you know, you'd like to think that uh, the government or, you know, there'd be some sort of legislation where they go, right, bang, you're secure for the next 10, 20 years. Keep doing what you're doing. You haven't got to worry about money. But unfortunately, I don't think, it, 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 you know, the world works like that. Um, but, um, you know, if if something what we does what we do, if that was provided throughout the country, I do think that you know you'd see medical medical costs come down, you see crime come down, uh, you see high you know uh, rates of uh, employment. I, I'm convinced by that. So you know you never know in the future it might something that the inclusive world might be able to get rolled out across the country, and we can help more people hopefully. If I could certainly get involved with that, mate, then hopefully we can do that one day because the work that you do again is fantastic. One thing that is good to see, though, is box boxers are getting behind you. You know, the likes of Ebony Bridges, Craig Spider Richards, I've seen this week that you met Tony Sims, was it, and got a shirt to Eddie Hearn. I, I imagine you both yeah. these characters in the sport, such big characters and influencers within the sport, getting involved and giving you that platform to a wider audience. Yeah, it, it's great. I mean, we have a guy who's an ambassador of ours, Bill Moran. And, and Bill is a fantastic guy, and he, he does a lot of work with with uh, the Tony Sims camp. And Bill is is with him being an ambassador, he gets our t-shirts out there, sends the message out there as much as he can. But the response we've had from from people who have got a lot of followers on social media and have got a lot of power to try and help has been really really good. Um, as you say, Tony Sims was in on Saturday, and I, it's someone I, who I look up to because I'm a, I'm you know I'm an England level one boxing coach. Um, this guy is, is 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 you know is is a uh, his stable's unbelievable. You'll probably agree with that. You know he's got Connor Ben and and Ryder, so he's got a great bunch of. And he come in and, and he was like, "Wow, this is this is really impressive." Um, because we have three floors in the gym now. We had three sorts of groups all at once, and he was like, "I would love to pick this up and put it in London." So to get feedback off people who were who were inboxing, and to know that you're doing the job right, is so satisfying, mate. But um, yeah, I, th- I think we lost you a second there, Liam. I don't know if you can hear me. Could, could you maybe repeat the last bit? I don't know. Are you, are you there? Can you hear me now? Yeah, can you can you hear me, mate? Yeah, I can, me? Hear, I can hear you now. The powers of technology. I, I got most of what you said there. <laughs> So I was just basically saying about it's nice that we're getting recognised by certain people in boxing and they're appreciating what we're doing in, in terms of, of the sessions. 
and you know hopefully as well now that we'll get the t-shirt out the logo out and more people will be wearing it around the country and supporting us as well absolutely and if i can eventually get hold of one of the shirts i will be doing so no speaking of boxing uh I presume, I hope you was as stupid as me to pull an all-nighter at the weekend and watch Fury Wilder. What did you make of the uh, performance and the fight as a spectacle? It was, I mean, it was it was fantastic fight, I thought. Um, I watched it the next morning. I couldn't stay up. I'm, I'm not as young as you, mate. Uh, I'm, but, I'm um, 22, I'm getting on now. <laughs> <laughs> Wait till you get to your late 30s like me, mate. It's going great. Um, I, I, I was really, really impressed. I mean, I I did think that we were going to see a better version of Wilder, which we did see. Um, but it, you know, Fury's just got his number, hasn't he? He he, he knows, he, you know, he made he made Wilder look small. There's two inches in it, and he made him look small. Wilder's got such long arms, and he was making Wilder, you know, fight short in the inside. He was just doing everything um, to make Wilder, you know, he, he just he just disarms him, didn't he? Even though he, he got put down twice, Fury, uh, I am a fan. He, he knows himself. He's going into he's going into a big fight. He probably knows he's going to get put down, but he knows he's going to win as well. So I was really impressed by it. What, what did you think of it? Yeah, uh, for everybody watching, I'm a massive uh, fan of Tyson Fury. Way more than inside the boxing ring. I've had my struggles with uh, mental health myself, as I'm sure some of your participants have. And three years ago. Not necessarily because of him, because I was already on the journey to sorting my life out. But after watching the the first the first fight with John T. Wilder and you know him getting knocked down and miraculously being getting back up and saying the interview afterwards about you know any anybody can come back from mental health issues. I think it's a really positive message. I mean, I don't know if you've seen the other day where he was four hundred pounds and he reshared a video of him saying, "I'm coming back for the bronze bomber and I'm going to take you out and all that." It's just mega to see how the mind works and how we can push past things. Yeah, these issues will always be there, and we're all dealing with them every day. But we don't have to suffer, do we? We we can manage it to the best of our abilities and therefore push forward. And I think it's a real positive message, way more than any boxing result for me. Yeah, most definitely, Joe. You're, you're spot on, mate. You're absolutely spot on, mate, honestly. It, mental health, I've had mental health issues, you know, um, and, and for you to say yourself, you, you know, thanks for thanks for sharing that, that you've had your own mental I health issues. Well, mate, yeah. Yeah, and, and, and you know what, mate? It's, it's yeah, it, it's, it's looking at Tyson Fury and, and what he went through and, he went from there to there, and then he's gone back up there. And the the mind is such a, a powerful tool. Um, and if you if you can get your, your sort of anxiety and, and and anything else under control, and you can you can transform into sort of positivity. Look at what he's done. It, it's enough to. It's very inspiring, isn't it? It's very very inspiring. Yeah, um, things like this when you when you first initially scared to press the record record button and things and you know stop talking re on record and things because I have a part of my condition which sometimes affects my speech and language when you get tense without knowing it but you know you got to push past the, the barriers within your head and just go with it and you know impact the world in some way which is what you and your project are doing and that leads me on to the final couple of questions really before I stop recording and then have a quick chat with you afterwards what are your what are the projects aims for the future in the next five years? Not necessarily five years, not something that everybody says, but you I suppose you understand what I mean. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um so we have just we've just uh, opened up a small community center, a, a disused community center in Kirkdale around the corner from our gym. And um, we opened it up in the summer. We've done a summer camp for four weeks. Oh. And it was activities. It was activities for everyone. Uh, it was opened up for the local community. Um, it's a it's a small centre, and it's surrounded by a massive playgrounds area, which is has got football facilities, basketball, tennis, um, and the centre itself. Um, you can use for like, you know arts and crafts and table tennis and snooker and stuff like that. So that's getting opened up again in, in October half term. Um, when we done the summer camp, we done. I think it was around about. Um, I think it was about eleven hundred people that come that wow. attended over the four weeks. So it was massive for us because 
even though we, we our you know our, our day job is is looking after additional needs children and, and doing sessions for mental health and everything else this was open up for the, the area of Kirkdale so yeah I mean to answer your question that's something that's around the corner that's going to evolve um we've we opened up a new branch in St Helens the uh, wild card gym they do a Sunday inclusive hub session so I think within the next five years what we'll be looking at is either you know improving the, the facility that we are at now in terms of getting state-of-the-art equipment, opening the doors up to more people, providing, because the building that we reside in is huge, so it's got potential to you to do education courses, to maybe do overnight stays. So that's something that we're, we're looking at, at targeting. Um, there's around about 100 children per week that get diagnosed with autism. So that's something that we would like to be the first the sort of protocol that want to get diagnosed, they come to us, we assess them, we help them. And then we distribute them into different offerings. So it's exciting because of the building where, where, where we're at and the area that we're at. Um, but yeah, I think to answer your question, we're probably going to look at maybe um, trying to open a few more branches, even if it's where a fully functional gym that's going, but they just have an inclusive hub maybe over weekends and we'll train the staff and, and we'll put our trademark on them. So that's something that we're looking into. Um, and also the premises that we're at is, ex- is extending it, uh, modifying it. And trying to target it to help more people, mate. Yeah, honestly, so it's, 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 it's exciting. Honestly, mate, for the viewers watching, I'm absolutely buzzing with this conversation. We're both beaming because I think it's absolutely brilliant just to have a genuine conversation of, with people who's doing good things like yourself. And if I can get that, if I can get down to Liverpool, I'm a Burnley resident. Uh, I'll try and get me down to one of your sessions one time and maybe do a live interview or something like that. But you certainly inspire people like myself because I've got cerebral palsy, full-time wheelchair user, mm-hmm. and you know you help people like ourselves to show to show us that the mind can help you help you achieve anything. And for anyone perhaps watching this uh, video who's aware of your project already with disabilities, uh, but um, if they are quite scared about coming down, for example, what message would you say to those people in a B to get them to come down to your sessions if they're local? Or just want to pop in one time? Yeah, the door's always open. You can always contact us. And, and it can, you know, understandably, it, it can be daunting walking into a new building of, 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 and being surrounded by people that you don't know. Um, but what we would always say is is, is just come down and, and, and come and say hello and we'll show you the building. And, um, you know, that's the hard part on just getting there. Everything else will be, be taken care of. And what I must say, Joe, as well, mate, very impressed with yourself, mate. Keep doing what you're doing. You're very inspiring, mate. You're a very intelligent lad. From, you know, any any issues that you've got, you, you, you're you punching through them, mate. So keep doing what you're doing. Hope, I hope your, your studies are successful. And um, get down to Liverpool so we can we can get you on the pads as well and show you how it's hard, mate. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> I, I do... I do uh... So, uh, 72 rounds, 40 seconds every day. So I'm, I'm, I'm pretty sure you'd be surprised with <laughs> my level of fitness. So yeah, thanks very much, Liam, for this interview today. I'll put the link to the details of your inclusive up in the description. I'll end recording now if I figure out how to do it. So there may be an awkward work while we <laughs> figure out how to end recording. But Liam Starkey, thanks very much for joining me today, and I look forward to speaking to you to, to you again soon, pal. Nice one. Thanks, Joe. Thanks for having me, mate. Wait, let's try and figure out how to stop recording.